Welcome back till sal 2 i Stockholm, stora aktiedagen. And without further ado, let's uh, go into space. And uh, the man who will travel with us is the uh, CSO of uh, AAC Clyde Space. Please welcome Mr. Craig Clark. Welcome, Craig. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will. So I, I'm. This, this presentation is in English um, with a Scottish accent, so I will try very hard to speak slowly so everyone can understand. Um, so, uh, first of all, so what, what is it we do? So, we are in a in the space industry, we make satellites, and it's quite an exciting time within in our sector at the moment because there's a lot of change happening, um, and we are one of the main companies leading this change within our sector. And the change is happening because technology is moving forward at such a fast pace and, and companies like us, are we're taking advantage of that and applying that to space. Um, we've also been investing in our manufacturing capability, um, allowing us to make very high quality products in higher volumes to service our market. And also we've been looking at different business models for our customers. Not all customers just want to buy a satellite. Our, our, our sector doesn't work like that. Lots of people want to use satellites, but not necessarily own satellites. So we've been investigating and using different models to make that happen for our customers. And these, the satellites that, that are being used are used for lots of different things, and it's an increasing number of applications. And some of the applications that we are already um, working in at the moment are things like Earth observation, which is taking pictures of the Earth. We do asset tracking, so looking so you have some transmitters on, on assets. There could be ships, for example. Um, so we'll be tracking them using space. Environmental monitoring, like looking at our atmosphere to see changes in, in concentration of gases. Um, we've also been working on projects that are utilizing quantum technology in space, so quantum being quite a new and exciting technology and how we can use that. And also Internet of Things, machine-to-machine -machine communications, uh, like fi the 5G, and sp space is actually part of, of the 5G rollout. It's about connecting everything, and space is a very good way of doing that. So these are some of the, the applications that we've been involved in and continue to be involved in. And with this increase in capability of very small satellites, we're seeing a massive increase in the number of small satellites that are being produced now and are planned to be, to be produced in the future. And this is being driven by not just the technology, but the cost of doing, of building satellites. If you're building a satellite that's huge, it's like fills this room, um, that's really expensive to do. It's really expensive to design, to build that. Um, it's expensive to launch and operate. And when you build a satellite like that, you, t you want to make sure that, you know, there's, there's a lot of paperwork that comes with it. There's usually lots of product assurance, and in many cases, the, the documentation that accompanies the satellite weighs the same as the satellite, and these are big satellites. Whereas the, the sector, the industry is changing. The, no longer can companies invest huge amounts of money to put a service in place 10 years later. By the time they've done that, the service need has changed, and they're finding that they need to be more agile and change their, their, their business models more quickly to to respond to customer needs. So they're moving to using small satellites and they're able to do this more cost effectively because they're smaller, they're cheaper to launch, and they can do a lot more different things on orbit. And you can also change your service quite ri rapidly as well. So every couple of years, maybe put a new service, just like you get a new phone um, every two years because the next generation of phone has come out. It's similarly, we're moving towards that type of model in space. Because of this change in the cost models, this is enabling new services to be delivered by existing space companies that use space to deliver services, but there's lots of new companies coming into our sector as well. So a little bit more about us. Oh. Um, so we're a global company, so we have our headquarters here in Sweden. Um, we have a base in Uppsala. Um, we also have a base in Glasgow in the UK and in the US. Um, we have commercial relationships with distributors in Korea and also in Japan. Uh, so we are, we've got a global footprint and we, we, we have always, as a, as a business, sold globally. It's, a, it's a very much a, an export global-led 
market. We're growing in numbers. Our, our workforce is now up to about 92 staff. Um, we've been busy building satellites and launching them. So since the start of 2018, we've launched seven satellites, and many of them we operate as well. And we continue to, to build our revenues as well. Um, last year, we, our turnover was about 78 million sec. And this year, we're on track to do roughly about the same. Um, but really important, I believe, is the fact that our order backlog is significantly higher than it was last year. So at the end of last year, I think it was about 67 million sec. And this year, we're actually around about, um, at the moment, about 180 million. So there's been a significant growth in the, our order backlog over the last nine months, especially. So what do we do? Well, initially, our, our company was based around supplying subsystems to the small satellite market. So subsystems are the components like the onboard computer, the power system, solar panels, things like that, that constitute the main operation of a satellite, so the, the heart of a satellite. So we've been building them for many years. And in about 2007, we decided to move up the value chain to start building and designing our own satellites. Um, and we've, our first satellite was launched in 2014. And since then, we've been growing steadily in, in the number of spacecraft that we produce. And that's become quite a large part of, of what we do. So the platform, what we call platforms, are basically the, the heart of the satellite. So all the subsystems combined to provide the satellite and packaged. What we're moving to do more so is doing missions. So the difference between a platform and a mission is the fact that we design the whole thing. So we'll design the, the orbit, the whole satellite, the communications, how what type of communications you use, what type of data processing you use. The whole thing is designed by us, and we deliver that for our customer with the payload. We can even launch the satellite for them and do all of the operations. Which sort of leads us on to what our, I talked about business models earlier. So one of the business models we are adopting is something called space as a service. And this, this basically enables our customers to not worry about the space part at all. Most of our customers are not really that interested in space themselves. They're interested in the data or the service that space can deliver for them, for their customers. So more and more, we are seeing customers come to us and they don't want to do anything with the satellite. They just want the data um, processed for their, the, for their particular application. So space as a service is a really big part of what we are doing now and we'll do more so in the future. Space as a service involves the design of this, the satellite, the build of it, the, the test involving all the environmental testing that we do to make sure the satellite can survive in space, the launch and operations. So all of these elements of a mission we actually do in-house, apart from the launch, which we contract our, our launch provider to do. Um, and this is, this is going to be very important for us moving forward. And there's some examples of, of our customers. Um, if we have a look. So we, we, we make many subsystems. And subsystems, as I say, is a very important part of our business. Most of our subsystems, the vast majority, are all very standard. And because they're very standard, that means the processes involved in producing them are very well understood, which means our margins are very well understood. So we're we're more and more trying to productize and standardize all of the as all aspects of what we do. So subsystems will continue to be a big part of what we do. And we, we have some very key customers in this, including um, companies in the US um, and Europe, and even military customers as well, such as the US Air Force. Um, for missions and platform, you can see there's a growing number of, of mission customers where we're providing the, the, the full spacecraft with the, the payload integrated. And moving to space as a service, we've, we've managed to secure our first customers in that area, um, with Orbcom in particular being the biggest contract that we've actually secured to date as a business. Um, which, um, which is important for us. And I think this is, this, is a this is a really important part for an indication of what our market's doing and how we are performing in our market. So over the last few months, we have won two major contracts, Orbcom being one and Utilsat being the other. So Orbcom and Utilsat are very well-established service providers in our, in our sector. 
UTOSAT are more akin to buying large spacecraft for hundreds of millions, if not a billion euros, um, to deliver their services. Are now they've they've now selected Clyde Space to explore different um, services that they can provide to their customers. So a very well established, a very sophisticated customer, and we're delighted that we've been selected to deliver their 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 first steps into using small satellites to deliver services. Similarly with Orbcom, I, um, Orbcom is a really interesting contract for us because we actually retain ownership of the of the satellites and we'll deliver data to them and by delivering data then we'll get our revenues. So very much space as a service for, for the Orbcom customer. So looking at some numbers, um, we continue, to, we're kind of holding steady at the moment with our revenues. Um, so we're at about 40, 46 MSEC for the, the first three quarters of this year, um, with an EBITDA of about um, minus 22 MSEC. And actually, but if you look at our, our numbers are moving in the right direction. There's still, still a lot of work going in, we're reinvesting into the business as we reinvest into our products. And the sheer issue that we, we raised in the summer is very much part of that as well, as we position ourselves to take full advantage of the growth in our sector. Um, and you can see, with our, actually what I mentioned earlier, the order backlog that we have has increased significantly. And what's very interesting about it is that our order backlog in terms of subsystems has stayed fairly steady. As I said, it's very important for us because we can just, these are very quick turnaround products that we can make good, good margin on. Um, the future for us, though, is going to be increasing the number of spacecraft that we produce and the, the services based on spacecraft. And this has been increasing massively over the last few months. Um, and we'll be delivering this order backlog over the coming months and years as we progress, as well as targeting more work of this type. So what's our plan? So I've hinted on that a little bit. Um, our plan at the moment is we're consolidating, so we want to improve our financial performance, get our delivery on time, very key, these two are very, very much linked, the, f the faster we can get product out the door, the less it costs us and the more money we can make, and we want to hit our sales targets, so we're doing, we're doing that at the moment and we want to continue to do that can, and continue to increase our, our order book. We are investing in resources in the business. As I mentioned, we've been recruiting heavily. Key skills are we're bringing into the business to strengthen our ability to deliver for our customers. Streamlining production, making it easier to pr produce the products that we, we make. And also setting up key partnerships within operations and sales. So we have, some, we have uh, many preferred suppliers that are vital to our business and we're solidifying those that supply chain, and that can be operations, launch, manufacturing, all sorts of areas of our, our business. And in the future, at the moment, we're making between 80 to 20 satellites per year, but we need to gear up to do constellations. And with cons a constellation of satellites is where you have many satellites that basically cover, give you full global coverage, and that gives you a, a, a continuous service from space, so that's, we see there's a lot of customers in that area that are needing missions and satellites. So we are gearing up to be able to supply large volumes of satellites and deliver services using large volumes of satellites. We're also still foc focused on having a US base where we can produce spacecraft for US uh, customers, and we're exploring new models for our space as a service um, offering. And if you, with this growth plan, you can see how this will change the nature of our business. So up until recently, a lot, the vast majority of our business has be, been based in subsystems. So more like we see on the left here, where subsystems, platforms, and then space as a service in terms of percentage of our, of our revenues. But this is going to change. Our plan is to continue to develop our platforms and our, our service offerings such that they become a much larger part of our business moving forward. But I, I should point out that we still conti will continue to supply subsystems. That's key 
we're not going to abandon where we where, where we've started. So our roadmap. Um, Currently, with, as I said, with our rights issue, where we've raised money, we are focused on developing something called a platform functional unit. And it sounds a bit technical, um, but basically what that means is all the different parts that constitute a spacecraft are going to be combined into one product. And that one product will be much easier for us to take through our system for production and test. It will reduce our costs. It will speed up the process of making spacecraft and put us in a great position to then scale up our technology to provide many more satellites per year than what we're doing just now. These platforms will be largely software defined, so by standardizing, we'll be able to configure spacecraft by software, not by hardware, and that again will mean that our production costs will go right down because we've standardized the whole process and, and, and the hardware side of our satellites, but define the function in, in software. We're also developing our operations capability. With more spacecraft, we need to be able to operate these. So we're doing this by a combination of partners and also improving our internal systems. And another thing that we're doing is a bit more payload related, which is something called a software-defined radio. So more and more of our customers like Utosat and Orbcom um, are requiring better processing on orbit of their data as we collect it. And this is done by having something called a software-defined radio that is a, basically a powerful computer that will be able to facilitate that more readily. And we're using third-party providers at the moment, but our plan is to improve that by developing something in-house, and we're starting work on that at the moment. So key takeaways for this. Um, the market for small satellites is growing really quickly. As I said, enabled by this the new technologies and new techniques of producing spacecraft. And this has been, and the strength and growth of this market has been, um, has been highlighted by the fact that we have very large incumbent service providers from space using small satellites now, so that's continuing to push the growth of the market. And also I think it's key to point out that all of the growth that we are seeing is from commercial customers, so not government customers, we're attracting the, the large commercial customers that come to us for their, their spacecraft. And I think this is a strong indicator that we are in a great position to take advantage of the growth in our market. Um, we're, we have a clear and financed plan um, alongside our technology development and our process development uh, activities, which will position us very strongly. And what our aim is to be as a leader in commercial small satellites as the market continues to grow. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Craig. So I think you're quite pleased with the recent uh, name change when you changed your name from uh, uh, OOC Microtech to AAC uh, Clyde Space because you founded that company uh, right back in the days. That's correct. Um, yes, I mean, both companies have a strong re reputation globally um, for quality and, and innovation. Um, but the, the name, by combining, combining the two names, we were able to take advantage of that. The Microtech was a little bit misleading because the AC, OAC Microtech mm. um, also had a tech side of the business, which was manufacturing, which they actually no longer do. Um, and our focus is purely on space and yeah. subsystems and platforms. Yeah. So you're from Glasgow and the Microtech is from Uppsala, right? Yeah. yeah. How come you hook up? Because you merged or something in uh, two years ago. That's right. Yeah. How, uh, how did you find each other? Well, um, there's our market's growing really quickly. And in a growing market, there's a process of consolidation that will, will happen. And I, I think there was a very like-minded people on both sides. So. Myself and the team at OAC Microtech, we are, um, we, we could see there's a, a need to consolidate and we want to lead that consolidation. So I think that, you know, it's a great teaming and um, we, we work really well together. The integration of the two sites is going really well. And by changing the name and having one name for the whole business, that, that helps an awful lot too. Okay. And and uh, you're the founder of, uh, of, of space, uh, of, uh, Clyde Space. Uh, now you're working as a CEO. That's your title. What what does it mean? What's your responsibilities in the company? 
What's your what you do at work? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> when you're not here. Um, well, you know, I support the, the executive management team, and um, I would do a, a lot of work with the kind of marketing figurehead type side of the business. I, I, I attend a lot of uh, meetings with government and different um, organisations like that because you know it's, the government plays a large part in space. Um, the space agencies in What's the UK. What's their concern? Is it like the, s the security or is it uh, there's not enough room in space or what do you talk to the government about? Uh, all of that. So it's there's regulation, legislation. In Scotland at the moment, we are planning to launch, in the UK we're planning to launch from, from, the, from our island and there's lots of regulation around that and opportunity. So there's, there's many discussions around about that side of things. But the government can be a big customer so we are also talking to them about how they need to, and, and governments take a long time to change. They are very yeah. set in their ways and will do traditional approaches, but they are now starting to look at the, this new technology and, and see that as an opportunity. So it's a bit of education for them. So if we, as we continue to grow our commercial business, yep. if we can then start to grow our government business, I mean, that's also a huge opportunity. So you do a lot of public affairs business yeah. Well, okay. Pretty so much. you have an expensive uh, lunch account, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you have a CEO. I hope he's doing his job as well. His name is uh, Luis Gomez, right? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about him? I know he's uh, Portuguese, right? Yes, yeah. Luis Portuguese. Um, so I used to work with Luis. Um, I w we both worked for a company in Surrey, um, which is now owned by Airbus, um, Surrey Satellite Technology. So we started our careers together in Surrey. Okay. Um, and he, w before he left Surrey, he was the CTO. He was sat on the board of, this, of the company. And I could, I think, I, I've known Lewis a long time and I could see how well he was doing there. And I think, I'm, well, I'm absolutely delighted that he chose to come to be our CEO. Um, he's doing a fantastic job. He's set, he's alre I already see some fantastic changes he's making in the business. Um, I, th I think all of the team feel that. So we're really excited to have Louis on board and look forward to working with him. Yeah. Uh, another question about uh, your people. I read that a couple of weeks ago you announced that your vice president of business development uh, has left uh, his position. Uh, and uh, will this affect the company and uh, will he be replaced? Um, it's a good for the moment, Luis has taken on responsibility yeah. for the VP of Business Development. We have actually a very large team. Um, as when we merged the two companies, we already had some senior people within Business Development, so they're still with the company, mm -hmm. and they're doing a great job. Um, there's also a great team here in Uppsala. But there's no recruitment going on? Um, we're, we're, we, we're going to decide what we're going to do um, over the next few months. Um, we're not taking any immediate decisions on that, um, but we have a very a very well high performing team at the moment and they do a great job so there's not i don't think there will be any disruption to our ability to win work okay mm. so uh did are you do you have any questions yes please Okay, let me repeat the question. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the market seems to be growing really uh, fast for the small satellite market, but it's a bit of a disappointment, says our uh, uh, friend here in, th in the audience. I is that true? Uh, has, the, has the market growth slowed down a bit? No, I, well, you know, it depends. I mean, no, it depends how you look at it. Not everybody thought that it's it was going to grow that fast. I didn't think it was going to grow as fast as the market predictions said. The space industry moves slightly slower than most industries because you have to wait for launches. There's, you know, there's if the government's involved in any projects, it always slows things down. So there, and there have been lots of them that were planned to launch earlier that maybe haven't launched yet. But the thing about it is that there's no disputing the fact that the technology is is basically causing a massive change to our sector and the growth is coming it is happening it's just happening at a slower pace um, we have in, we're investing in our technology and our products and not in our infrastructure as much so we've not we've not established a huge manufacturing plant so that we can build thousands of satellites we're focused on our product making that suitable for mass production 
and then that will come. So it's really about the technology just now, and that's I think that's a right focus. We're not a build it and they will come type company. We're a let's position ourselves, let's get the right customers on board, and let's grow with them. Because there's, I mean, a lot of the market projections will be based on people saying, oh, we want to launch 100 satellites, but maybe that will happen, if they want to do it in two years, but it might happen in five years. And I, so I'm not surprised by that, but I'm very confident that the growth so is there. So you didn't uh, adjust your goals in any way? No, no. According yeah. to the growth, okay. Would you like to allude on that? Uh, or are you happy? Okay, great. Uh, because uh, you, as you mentioned, you, uh, you increased your order backlog quite a bit uh, from uh, like more than 100 million crowns in in the uh, increase. Uh, could you uh, elaborate a little bit? How did you achieve uh, this? I think, well, we, as I said earlier, we have a, we already have a great reputation. We we've always delivered for our customers. Mm. Um, we've been investing in our products. Did you change anything in the sales department, or uh, no. did you lower the price, or or higher the price, or? And no, actually, we we. I think we're getting better at understanding our customer needs and, and you know engaging with them at an earlier stage, and then when we do put our proposals in to those customers, we're in a much better position to win them. Uh, that reflected with we, we have got more systems on orbit than any of our competitors. Mm. So that's a very I mean it's really heritage in, in the space industry. Is and those really orders important. are they coming from like a, a few customers or is it a lot of them? It's a combination. We still sell lots of subsystems, so lots of small customers that are very important to us too. And then we have some much larger customers like Utilsat and Orbcom that give us like a much contribute to our order backlog, but they're all important because they, they all contribute yeah. to so our the offering. Is, oh, every big client is important. Every client Small is important. Small ones and the big ones. Yeah. <laughs> but you mentioned Orbcom and the uh, Utilsat. You said that they are the largest uh, contracts so far, so you must be very happy to have them. But are they typical for your future business, would you say? or? Yes. Yeah. I'd so that's so. where you're heading. That's where Those our focus is. Okay. Yeah. And uh, in two years, w what would you say? Where are you then? Uh, where you? Where do you earn the most of your money in two years? Um, if we can continue to win more space as a service type contracts and, and grow that side of our business, I think most of our business will be coming from from the missions and services based around those missions. Okay. Uh, you took in like 80 million crowns in an emission uh, quite recently. Uh, do you still have the money or did you already spend them? Um, we still have, in our, if you look at our report, um, we, we have enough um, funds to do the set, to, to basically complete our plan. That, that was the objective, so yeah. our product development and other activities that we have ongoing. So uh, my last question would be, how, how do you like to describe your financial situation at the moment? Well, um, are we there have any weaknesses? I think I think the really key thing here is our order book, our order backlog. Um, we have to deliver that. We're, we have the people in place to deliver that, and by doing so, we should improve our financial position. That's. I mean, I've been running. I've been in business a long time, and the best way to improve your financial position is get more sales and deliver them, and that's our intention. Okay, great, Craig. Have you ever been to space? No. Oh. <laughs> and I never went to go to space. <laughs> Could you ask that for your next uh, talk to your CEO? I would like to yeah. go to space. <laughs> no, your satellites are not, uh, We're not big possible enough. to. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> forget that. So thank you so much and okay, good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Okay.